Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about fruit knives. Now if you never heard of a fruit knife, um, they produced these back um, as far as the 1700s is from my research. Um, but they were mostly popular during the Georgian, the late Georgian and the Victorian eras. And what they did was they made them out of sterling silver or coin silver because the uh, silver didn't react with the um, acids that were in fruits. Plus, they didn't like to get their hands dirty or their gloves dirty. So you know how prim and proper the Victorians were. So here's a bunch of examples that I've collected over the years. Some of them are really, really cool. Um, take, for example, this one. Okay, now this is solid sterling silver. Very... Uh, engraved yeah that side's plain but nice engravings on the the scales and this is what's called a, a seed picker so they would pick the seeds out of whatever fruit they were eating and a lot of times they would have their initials engraved on these let's see if I have one here's one with a bunch of initials on it it's actually a dedication, it looks like. Let's see if I can grab my little uh, monocle here and see what that says. It says HJC to CJ. Don't know who those people are, but that's pretty cool. So now also on here, they have a series of hallmarks. Now you could actually date it from that. Here's an example. So you'll have this, like the PS, that's the maker's mark. Then this lion passant, the crown leopard for the London assay office, the date letter O denoting 1809, and the head of George III for duty mark. So that would be a Georgian one. Right? And then they have all the different assay offices, like Birmingham is an anchor. Uh, Chester was a shield containing a sword in the center surrounded by wheat shields. Um, Dublin was the harp. London was the um, was a punch containing the leopard's head. Uh, assay office mark for Sheffield was a punch containing a crown. Um, I have most of those examples in these knives. Some of them aren't stamped with hallmarks so my assumption is that the ones that aren't stamped with hallmarks were probably made in the USA okay this one here says sterling now they made them from sterling they made them from coin silver which I believe coin silver is they just took silver coins and melted them down and made them uh, I could be wrong but uh, nice ornate patterning on this it's not engraved these Mother of Pearl ones, I've never seen a Mother of Pearl one with one of those seed pickers, but these are pretty early. Um, at one time I did look up all the, uh, the hallmarks for the ages, they go, they go pretty far back. But they're really cool. They're kind of expensive too, I mean I've seen them go anywhere from 60 to 200 bucks a piece. So these are some later examples. Um, I'm going to assume these are silver plated and they have a little uh, lanyard holder here. I guess they would use these as a fob, a fob knife. They would put it on the end of the chain of their pocket knife. And um, it's obviously a fruit knife. It's got the seed picker, but these are not silver blades. So here's a good tip for you. If you're out antique shopping or flea market or whatever and you see anything that you think is silver, if you have a magnet and you touch it to it and it sticks, it's, it's only pleated. Okay, it's a good tip for buying silver, any kind of silver jewelry or, or anything basically that you think is silver. Because if it sticks to it, it's not silver. Okay, real silver will not stick to a magnet. And get a powerful magnet, because sometimes the, it does have a certain amount of silver content in it, but it's alloyed, and it's not real. 
So a real one will not stick to a magnet. So that's a little tip for you. So I do have some ex more examples of the little fob type. This one has somebody's initials on it. They kind of fell out of fashion towards, you know, I'd say the early 1900s, maybe into like the 20s and 30s. They, they really kind of stopped using them, but it was in vogue back in the Victorian age. Um, I believe that Abraham Lincoln actually had one. So they're pretty cool. They get very uh, fancy. This one here is Mark Sterling. This one's Mark Sterling right on the blade. No engravings on that one. That one's Mark Sterling. So pretty good, uh, pretty cool little knives. A little part of our history. And uh, that's really all I kind of know about the fruit knives. But I just think they're really cool. Well, there you go. That's how I do stuff. Go out there and uh, try to find yourself a nice fruit knife. Thanks for watching, everyone.